other stuff they have added in is they've added in new render formats. So we've got all the ones that we used to have, but we've also added in this one, DNX HD and DNX HR. If you remember from when I was talking about 4K footage, these are AVID formats, which make a particular type of file. It's called an MXFOP1A file which you'll be familiar with if you're doing stuff for broadcast. If you're not familiar with broadcast, then it probably means nothing at all, but it's just a particular type of way of making a video clip. There's OpenEXR, another kind of familiar format for broadcasters. There's even this one, Raptor DCP, which means you can actually go through and make what's called a digital cinema package. This is actually a file you'll find a struggle to play back on a computer, but the whole idea is you can take your edit and with what you've already got inside the media encoder, make it up into the right kind of file to go down to your local cinema and they can plug it into their digital cinema projector and play it. Have to admit I haven't tried this yet, it's on my to-do list and one of the things I'm dying to have a go at. But that's the idea of that, you can actually make a digital cinema package ready to put up on a projector somewhere. You've got the option to have more effects on them. You've done an edit, you've got a bunch of effects on the timeline, you want to stick something over the top. On the effects list, you can put this onto everything. So you can choose to add a Lumetri look on everything if you want to. Which I could have done on the timeline, you can do it here. You can put an image overlay on. So that's a very simple way of just putting a bug in the corner. Yeah, you just tick that, choose an image, and then you'll have a little bug somewhere in the corner if you want to. Or it's just a way of putting an overlay on it so that you can send a proof out to somebody but to get the final thing they've got to pay you for it. You can stick the name over it. So you can see here I've got different options for names. I can stick time code over it. So this is the time code either that it's making up or the time code in... It says media file. Media file in this case is the actual sequence time code. It's not going to the individual clips and getting their time code off them. It's going from the, the actual sequence. You've got a video limiter, so obviously you can stick that on there and then you can get it to just keep everything within legal limits. The loudness normalization, that's a new one. Loudness is something that you would use if you're a broadcaster. You know, if you send something off to be broadcast these days, they'll take the file that you send them, they'll shove it through a program which will analyze it and say whether your audio is within certain limits, certain broadcast standards. So you can see I've got different standards listed here. And if your file that you've given them is outside of those standards, they will chuck it back at you and say, do it again. There's ways inside of Premiere and in Audition to actually go through and measure the loudness on the timeline, but you do have a little tick box there where you can just tick that and then choose your standard, and then it'll automatically make sure it stays within those limits for you when you produce the final file. The video limiter will produce you legal color ranges, the loudness normalization will produce you legal audio ranges. Of course it changes stuff, so you might have gone through and done a fancy mix and then when you actually tick the loudness meter and you bring it out it doesn't quite sound the same. So it's much better to get it right on the timeline in the first place. But if you don't have the time you can get it roughly right, tick that and it'll be within your loudness limits. The other thing they've added in is this thing, time tuner. The idea of the time tuner is you can select it and you can take your edit, which is three minutes, and you can say no, let's make this whole edit a bit shorter. Maybe make it exactly three minutes. I'm trying to get an edit done which is exactly three minutes. I've got it nearly right but I haven't got the time to fiddle around with it and change it or the, the boss has just come in and said quick we need this to go up to be broadcast right now but it needs to be three seconds shorter. You run the time tuner, type in the duration you want, it gives you the percentage of the duration that you're changing and then you click on export and it will scrunch the edit to actually get it down to be a bit shorter. It does this either by speeding up certain bits or trimming a few frames off here and there. So it will change your edit. And personally, when I'm editing, I spend a lot of time meticulously getting my edit to be exactly what I want frame accurately. And I've actually run this over some of my own edits, which I've spent ages on. It hasn't done much to them because it hasn't found anything it could really trim. It's the sort of thing that I would only use if I was in a hurry and desperate and I had to get the thing done within three minutes, not three minutes and 10 seconds. If I had a little bit more time, I'd go to the timeline and do it myself. If you're doing a change of anything up to about five or 6%, the change isn't that noticeable. Anything more than that, and it kind of makes a mess of stuff. 
So you've got a lot of extra effects that you can do there on your clips when you're exporting. And all this lot is also in the Media Encoder program as a standalone. So you know with the Adobe Media Encoder, you can either run it from inside of Premiere, and then you tie up Premiere and it does that, or you can run the Media Encoder on its own and throw clips into it and use it that way. Well, all this lot is in the Media Encoder as a standalone.